Eric, could you talk a little bit about the, the Maybe Super Heavy Nine add in? Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, we've got three versions of the. Um, I'm not, not awake yet this morning, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, three versions of the K4. We have the base K4 direct sampling, two receivers. Um, Two receivers off one antenna, not, not two, though you can be on different bands if you want. Uh, K4D adds an additional A to D converter, so you can have two different antennas driving the two receivers if you want. And also... Um, a full duplex? Full filter. duplex? Not full oh, duplex yet. Okay. No, it's not necessarily okay. two on the box at this point. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm you, sure you've got that question. That's a challenge. You never might, might be surprised, but not, not yet. Okay. Um, All right. Not yet. I'm glad I asked. And then, um, so that gets you the ability to do diversity reception. We can have even two antennas on the same frequency, you know, maybe two dipoles or something, a different altitude. Orientations. People will fade differently on each one when your bands are opening. You put your headphones on, we have one in each ear. You can keep a conversation going even when guys stepping below the noise on one antenna, they'll usually still be on the other one a little bit. So that works really well. Then the top option is the K4 HD. And again, these are all modules you can upgrade from one to the next. So you add the, H, the D option, then you go up to the HD option after that. And HD is higher blocking dynamic range. That's the one thing that the front end superhead will do better than a direct sampling radio. It will give you another 20 dB of blocking. If you have a single uh, neighbor or say an in band yeah. person on a multi operator field test station, field day, you got CW, data, sideband all on 20 meters at the same time. Right, right. That's where the K3 does so well. Sorry, are you so, seeing numbers here or holding off on that? Um, in terms of, well, it's basically you'll have blocking dynamic range similar to a K3, so certainly up in the, the 140 to 150 range. Okay. So get okay. at least 20 dB better than most, most SDRs. That's with the Super F? That's with the Super F front end. And you still get all the benefits. It's, we, we convert down to 8 megahertz. We have some built in roofing filters on it. It's the filters. You don't have to buy any others um, because we'll have a CW and a, say, a sideband bandwidth one on for each of the two receive paths on okay. And then we immediately direct sample that with our high dynamic range uh, direct sampling SDR right after that at 8 megahertz. So if you go narrower than those, um, you're not going to have a problem with that handling any signal that could get inside your crystal filter, you know, who's close by inside that. Because if they're loud enough to cause a problem for us on our direct sampling inside your crystal filter, their key clicks or their transmit IMD or something that's going to be a lot louder than any yeah. time they're going to play. So oh, and speaking of key clicks, are you going to allow any adjustment on the rise time? On the um, we actually already have a sigmoidal rise time, so it's optimized for minimal key okay. clicks. If you look on the QST reviews where they send a string of bits and look at the spectra. Yeah, yeah. Now, so it, We're so not going to let you shorten it so you can be wide. Right, you know, right. right. It's, that's actually good. I mean, so yeah, that's, that's actually fixed there. on all of our radios. You can actually hear a K3 and recognize it on there. It's a really nice sound on it yeah. on CW. Okay. So, bottom line on this is it's, it's an extreme, the HD is for really extreme operation. The expeditions, um, multi-transmit, basically you have multiple transmitters, very loud. I mean, we're talking S9 plus. 40 to 60 or 100, not just a guy that's in the same area. So the guy down the block that's on 160 with you, yeah, you might want to have something that level. But you can start off with the first two modules, since so everybody as good as any other direct sampling is, so hopefully better. We've done some nice things on those. We're not giving away the whole boat yet. <laughs> sure. to tell how they work. But uh, basically, you can say, hey, I got Joe just moved in down the street. He's got a 160 antenna up. He's crashing all my radios. You can put that in there, and he basically has no problem for you. Now, if he's got a dirty transmitter, I can't fix that. But, uh, right, right. Hey, that. maybe talk a little bit on um, reserving one, or you know, what's. The... Oh, all right. Now, we're going to first of all going to start shipping these um, late this year, uh, November, December. We're taking. You can sign up. You can just put an order in and not have to pay anything, and say, okay, after you ship your first couple of production runs, because you can put a deposit and get to those earlier runs. But just without anything, you can still reserve a space after that just to get in line. Okay. Um, and you don't have to pay until we ship, so that's, that's an easy one. Oh, nice. Now, nice. now if you want to get in the first production run, um, and you're getting like the initial K4, um, where you can either give us one or two, uh, for the first production run, you can pay roughly what the price is going to be, roughly about $39.99 as a deposit, refundable um, on that. And any small difference, we actually bring it out for new charge at shipping time. And if you get the K4D, I think it's still be $6.99 to be in that first production group. If you want the HD, which I won't be shipping for about another quarter or two after that. That's an add-in module that we can ship you afterwards, or you, know, you can wait for us to ship either way. I haven't set the price for it. It'll probably be in the low to five, so we can get to that at that level. Um, okay. But uh, that the, one, the kit version, like, uh, will be kit later. version probably later, probably the first or second quarter of next year. Okay. We have to produce these for a bit before you put sure. them Okay. So, but you can also do a $1,500 deposit instead of the full number and um, basically get into the second production run. You can allocate a certain amount, several hundred or whatever, or more in the first production run, and then go to second. So, okay. 
No, so. that's that's probably a, a good duration here. I'll, I'll get this posted. But thanks for no taking problem. a few minutes oh, here on Sunday morning. Have you already turned it off? Or one more thing? No, no, oh, no. One more no. thing. Network uh, remote control is built in. So oh yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Actually, that's good. Good. This point. radio is hosting right now. I've got this K4 actually doing everything the same. I'm controlling this radio over here. You can, as I tune on the right, you'll hear. So I'm controlling the middle radio with that. I actually even have a software app running on a tablet doing the same thing. Yeah, Wi-Fi there. Yeah. And we can stream, yeah, basically it's Ethernet out the back. It has all the remote streaming pan adapters, streaming audio, full remote protocol built into it. So you don't have to have external boxes or software okay. to remote control. I assume K3 CAT compatible. Um, yes, absolutely. We've yeah. got all the legacy I.O. on the back. So basically okay. for your K3S, we've got everything from line in to line out, the USB with the sound card built in, all the CAT protocol at the low level, we'll just work with your logging program, so it's already there. Of course, we'd add some new stuff in to support yeah. this stuff. But. Well, CAT on the Ethernet, too? Maybe eventually? CAT on the Ethernet, um, I eventually? I think that works over the Ethernet, too, because oh. it's, we're basically a client-server implementation inside the box, so the server really doesn't care where the info is coming from. Nice, 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 okay. Obviously, the last guy to send the command wins. We had two guys fighting over <laughs> who was tuning the VFO over here earlier today. Okay. That was, uh, or yesterday, and that was, uh, that was pretty fun. I mean, there's some great possibilities. Possibilities there oh, yeah. with PGT and everything else potentially yeah. Yeah. maybe if it's oh, yeah. fast we enough. Can do yeah. that. I want to test the timing on it, make sure I'm happy yeah. with it for full break yeah. and some yeah. Does this thing still decode ready and CW? Yes, oh, the question is does it decode in the box still ready CW PSK 31 and 63? Are we decoded and displayed or sent? You can plug a keyboard or a mouse, by the way, into the USB connectors. And you can point to click, tap to click on the screen, use the mouse wheel to fine tune if you want, or slide your finger back and probably pop up a little fine tuning window that's a whole other high resolution uh, pan adapter. Oh, and nice. It goes away afterwards, you know, on the okay. side of the SD side. Hey, well, I'll keep this around nine minutes here. You know, they say yeah. that. I can't wait too long, but uh, oh, my voice is going out anyway. <laughs> congratulations, Eric, okay, on the uh, K4 and a lot of exciting things to come. So thank you. Thank you. Right. 73, everyone. NGC Finette.